Let's take our Bibles tonight and be turning to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. While you're turning, uh, let you know we got some more of these gospel tracts printed. The greatest gift. And I uh, got them ready to go. There's a bunch of them out on the Welcome Center. And I encourage you, we ran out of them Sunday morning, so if you were looking for some and didn't get them, and uh, get you several of them and take them with you, put them in your car, and it's a great, great gospel presentation, clear as it can be. And on the, on the back, the invite to Sunday morning services and also Christmas Eve uh, next Thursday evening. So let's use those, get the, get the word out. My wife and I have a list of people we're uh, targeting uh, between now and Sunday to give an invite to and give the gospel to. So let's um, take advantage of this opportunity. We sing about the birth of Christ. We sing about what it means to us, what it means to the world. And, uh, and it's very true. All those things are true, but it's not just for us. It is for everyone, and they need to hear it. So Philippians chapter 3, I want to... Tonight, talk about uh, a matter that you can't talk about too often. Brother Jason Hawkins preached a related message the Sunday night that we were gone about girding up the loins of your mind. And he gave this great thought about how glad he is that men don't wear skirts anymore. And uh, I said, Amen. I was actually doing some walking and on my listening to the sermon. But the reality is, skirts are coming back in, So, but it doesn't mean we have to wear them, right? So anyway, we're not going to talk about that, but we are talking about our minds. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And if we're going to change the way we feel and change the way we act, change the way we live, we've got to change the way we think. And one of the reasons I think this is so relevant it's always relevant, but particularly now is because I'm shocked. I'm, I'm just truly shocked at what people are, can believe, you know, in our country, what, what people's minds will allow them to believe. It's not common sense. This whole wokeness is not common sense. It's not based on any reality. It's just based, somebody said it and everybody starts believing it. Uh, just just kind of like... Uh, Whatever people say, it's crazy as it seems, like I was just noticing an article today about an, an, this great attempt to try to remove uh, a statue, uh, the school, Abraham Lincoln, named after Abraham Lincoln, because Abraham Lincoln wasn't, wasn't strong enough, I guess, to help the blacks. He did a lot to help the black community, but it's not enough, and people just, just get on board and believe it, and so we need to know why we believe what we believe. And we need to think about it. Young person, we need to think about it. And that's really what this is about. Philippians chapter 3. Please stand with me if you would, please. And we're going to read verses 7 and 8. We'll read some other passages, but this will get us started. Philippians 3, 7 and 8. And I want to call your attention as we read to the words count or counted. Um, Verse 7 says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. If you're counting, that's three times the word count is found in this passage. And this is a It's a great passage. Philippians 3 is one of those places that deserves to be on our favorite list uh, because it's at one hand inspirational, but it's also challenging. But what made Paul think the way he he thought? This is is what I want to begin tonight. I mean, why did he think this way? That everything that I thought was valuable, now I consider loss. It wasn't wasn't even advantageous. It It was actually a negative uh, it wasn't an asset, it was a liability. Um, what, what made him that way? What made him think that way? Was he brainwashed? You know, was he just a deceived fanatic? If he thought that way, should we think that way? I mean, should we think that way, the way he thought? And, and if so, how do we get there? And so we're going to 
look at those subjects tonight. Let's pray as we begin. Father, thank you again for your word. As we study the Bible tonight, Lord, lead us, speak to us through your word, and Lord, help us to uh, not complicate things. Help us, Lord, to uh, uh, see it in its simplicity, I pray, and uh, receive it as the truth that changes lives. Help us, Lord. We all need to think right. We all have this battle in our minds. God, you know it's true. We know it's true that we think things that are just uh, not really truth. We believe things uh, that aren't healthy. And so, Lord, please help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we find this word, and this sort of arrested my attention uh, recently, these three, three uses of the word count in our English Bible. It's a great word, count. But what did Paul mean when he said that? When he said in verse uh, eight, or verse 7, he says, those I counted, that's past tense. It's, I counted loss for Christ. In verse 8, I count all things but loss. And again in verse 8, do count them but dung. So what did he, what did he th- mean when he said, I count them? When, you know, most of us, when we think of counting, we think of numeric values and addition and, you know, how many of those, you know, how many, I counted the stars last night, took me most of the night. Um, what do you, what does he mean when he says counted? And words matter. Um, all the, the Bible is not just filled with ideas and thoughts and themes, it's, it's words, and words matter. Every word of God is pure, the Bible says. And so what does he mean when he says count? Um, well, if you look at a modern dictionary, which I did, and a Webster's Dictionary, um, it, said, it said it's like counting, like counting the stars, like counting this, but it also said it's, it's to have value, like uh, these are the people who really count, they really matter. But that doesn't get at what Paul was saying. So I looked at my 1827 Webster's Dictionary, which is a good resource to have. If you don't have one, you can get it online for free. But uh, there's a few additional definitions in in 1827 that Webster had. One was to to reckon something to be so, to, to count it to be so. For instance, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. It was applied to him. It also used the word esteem. It means to consider or think. Psalm 119, um, by the way, Webster's 1827 dictionary uses this Bible reference to explain uh, what one definition. He put Psalm 139, I count them mine enemies. I consider them my enemies. That still doesn't get at what Paul is saying here. And so I don't say this to make it. Difficult, but I'm just saying we ought to know if we read the Bible, we ought to want to know what the word means. And the word here, count, the the Greek word has two primary definitions, or a primary definition, a secondary definition. And the primary definition is to lead. It has to do with leadership. It has to do with influence. That's the primary definition of this word that's uh, translated in our English Bible as count. The secondary definition is to esteem or to think and it's really about leading your mind that's what I that's the that's what I come out of a very simple definition of the word is to lead your mind to lead your mind in thinking and and really I think it's so practical that we understand this and an important principle because the normal thing is when we think something then we do it we just follow our mind but we're not to just follow our mind. We're to lead our mind to think the right stuff. There's a big difference in those two things. You know, we don't just, whatever comes to our mind, we do it. We, 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 take, we take the information that we have and we apply it to leading our minds. You know, you know Paul said, set your affection on things above. You place your mind, your affection on things that are eternal, things that are heavenly, and that's, and that's what we're to do. You know, we've heard the cliche, you know, their mind's in the gutter. Well, your natural mind doesn't know how to think the way it's supposed to. Because it didn't get converted. When you got saved, your mind did not get converted. That's why we're to be renewing our mind. We're to be changing the way that we think. 
So rather than following our mind, I think this word means Paul is saying, I'm, I've led my mind to think this way. Another reference work in Thayer's work, he said this, a belief, he defined this word that's translated as count, a belief not based on emotion, but careful consideration of facts, deliberate and careful judgment. So, so let's look at this word in Philippians 3 in the context, because Paul is expressing a powerful conviction in verse 7 when he says, All things were gained to me, those count, I counted loss for Christ. Now, if you read a few verses prior to this, and I want to do this, just read through it in verse 4 of Philippians 3, we have this list. It's like these are the things that Paul would put on his resume. This is my background, this is my education. This is my religious upbringing. This is my national heritage. This is what he's saying beginning in verse 4. For, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any, uh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. I've got more reason to trust in the flesh than, than the average person. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, his commitment to the law, his belief in the law, his familiarity with the law, his education in the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, he said, that's my background, that's my heritage, that's my upbringing, that's where I came from. And it's, a, it's in reference to that, verse 7, that he says, but what things were gained to me, those things that I thought were my advantage, those things that I thought made me better, improved me, what things were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ. Now, what caused him to think that way? What caused a man to take and look at all of these things that seemed so important to him at one time and say, now I consider those things to be less than important now? He changed the way he thought about them. And that's what, that's what this word counting is about. That it's, it's, it's not based on his a sentiment. It's not based on his emotion it's based on the careful examination of what he knows to be factual. He came to this position. Based on all this reliable data, he's led his mind to believe that everything I believed before was not that important compared to what I know now. Now, uh, imagine, let's just imagine that you are uh, coming to services tonight and you see a a backpack on the side of the road and you pull over and pick it up and it's just full of unmarked bills. S small denominations, $20 bills, a backpack full of them. My first thought is, you better tithe on it. <laughs> and the thought comes to your mind, well, no, you know, nobody's going to claim this. Who else is going to claim this? You may even think, you know, I've been praying for God to give me some money. Right here it is. But then if you really think about it, you think, you know, well, this belongs to somebody. I mean, how could God bless? If I, if, does the Bible not say, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you? If this was someone else, if this was yours, wouldn't you want somebody to... So you think it through, and you think it through, you're leading your mind to think a way different than what you would normally think, and you come to a, to a better position... And you're leading your mind to think the right way. Now that's really what this is talking about. You're not just thinking what comes to your mind. You're leading your mind. And that's what Paul is saying right here. After, after all these things that meant so much to me, as I really look at what I know to be true now, none of that's really as important as I thought it was compared to what I know to be reality now. Those things aren't to be treasured. They're not even to my advantage he, he makes a stronger statement in verse 8. Verse 7, he says, Those things that were gained to me, I counted lost for Christ. 
Verse 8, yea, doubtless, and I count all things. Not just those things. I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Every other thing there is. I consider to be loss compared to the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. That's quite a statement, isn't it? Everything. And then he even makes it, I think, more serious in verse 8 when he says this. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them. Count being I do lead my mind to this position to believe this. I count them but dung that I may win Christ. Anything and everything that competes or distracts from the excellency. That's a great word there in verse 8. The excellency. Excellent means superior. It means high above. Excellent. The excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. Now that's, that's an unusual way of thinking, young person. Just think about this. Anything and everything that would compete... With me getting to know the Lord better, I count as dung. Dung. That's a, that's a pile of worthless nothing, right? Waste. How could, you get, how could you find anything, you know, more worthless than that? But he says, I count all those things. What, what it would it be like if we said, no matter what... I, what what uh, friendships I could have, what popularity I could have, what success I could have, no matter what I could have. If it stood in the way of me knowing God better, I would consider that like a pile of manure. That's a tremendous statement, isn't it? Quite graphic, really. Now, how did Paul come to that conclusion? Now, we ought to, we ought to think about this tonight. Um, how did Paul come to that conclusion? And, and how far from that conclusion might we be? How did he come to that conclusion? It wasn't an emotional thing. It wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a trendy thing. He didn't come to this place because everybody's doing it. He came to it according to this definition of counted. He came to it by carefully considering the true value of things. Based on his understanding of truth, he fixed his mind in this position. It wasn't based on any kind of sentiment. It wasn't based on misinformation. It was based on truth. And, you know, I, I, th I, don't, I don't know if any of us would consider ourselves great thinkers. I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a great thinker. But I know this. If we don't learn to think for ourselves and think biblically, then we're going to be in a bad place, really. You know, hold your finger here in Philippians, and let's go to, to the book of uh, Proverbs for a moment. Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21 and verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. That's a great verse. If every, if every word of the Bible is true, and it is, then it means that every way of a man, everything a man considers, every path a man considers is right in his own eyes. In other words, it makes sense. This makes sense. So is it safe for us to, to trust our own thinking? And the answer to that is no, it's not safe. It's not, it's not good for us. You know, my wife and I were uh, reading our Bibles together this morning and thinking about those verses, two verses in Proverbs that says, you know, that um, what does it say? 
Every way seemeth right. There's a way that seemeth right. Took me a moment. I had a little disconnect there. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Just, young person, just because it seems right to you doesn't mean it's right. And by the way, that's not just young people. That's all people. Just because it seems right doesn't make it right. Just because, as Proverbs 21 says, it's right in our eyes, that doesn't make it right. And if we just, and, and I, I don't think this is an exaggeration. I'm not think, saying it's true of any of us, but I think it's true in human nature, generally speaking. And that is... We just tend to do what we think is right. We buy that because we think it's right. We do that because we think it's right. We go there because we think it's right. But really, is our mind influencing us or are we influencing our mind? Are we leading our mind in the right way? Our values should be based on a careful examination of truth and, and data and not what's popular, not what makes me feel good. Uh, there's two places that we need to be careful about getting information and getting thoughts. Go to Romans for a moment. I'm going to mention these fairly briefly, but Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. It says in... Uh, Verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded, that's fleshly minded, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There's two different kinds of thinking, carnal thinking and spiritual thinking. One of them brings life, one of them brings death. One of them brings peace. Then verse 7 says, Because the carnal mind, the minding of the flesh, fleshly thinking, is enmity against God. It's against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So where, where, do, we, where do our thoughts come from? Well, part of our thoughts come from our fallen nature, our natural way of thinking. That's why the Bible says there's a way that seems right. It's just natural to think that way. We're naturally prone. For instance, all right, here's a good simple illustration. We are naturally prone to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves, to survive. And yet Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, you have to deny yourself. You have to die to self. Matter of fact, Jesus taught that the way to live is to die, not physically die, but spiritually die. So your natural, your natural inclination is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work to protect and preserve what I want. This is, I have the right to do this. That's a dangerous way to think, but it's natural. It's, it's the carnal, fleshly way that we think. Dying to self is, does not appeal to human nature. Um, go to Ephesians for a moment. Ephesians chapter 2 talking about how we were before we got saved and, and the difference that Christ makes. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. He gave you life. You were spiritually dead. He's given you spiritual life, quickened you. Ephesians 2 and verse 2, Wherein in time past, before you were saved, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, conversation being lifestyle, behavior. We all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So one of the things that influences our thinking is just our human nature. Our, even our sinful nature. Nobody had to train us to be selfish. I didn't have to go on a course on how to be prideful and selfish and self-centered. You know where I got it? It's the human nature. It come natural. 
And by the way, if you're not walking in the Spirit, you're subject to going along with that human nature all the time. There's, by the way, there is a better way. There is a better way, and it's not walking in the flesh. It's walking in the Spirit and dying to self and letting His life be manifested in us. So our fallen nature affects what we think. Go to 2 Corinthians, if you would please. If you're in Ephesians, go to the left a little bit to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll look at another example. Another source of bad information, fake news. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, or verse 3 it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So it's talking about how lost people are blinded and kept in darkness. Verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world. Now who's the God of this world? Who is it? Satan is. Notice it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So who else affects our thinking, blinds the mind? Satan does. So we, you know, when we think about this... Um, tissue up here in our head, this thinker. What, what, where does information come that influences the way we think? Well, it just Some of it just comes from human nature. You say, well, that, that's talking about a lost person. Well, let's think about another passage of Scripture without turning to it. Matthew chapter 16. Where Jesus told His disciples He was going to go into Jerusalem and He was going to be tortured and brutally treated and killed. And Peter said, Simon Peter said, we'll never let this happen. Not so, Lord. We'll never let that happen. And Jesus said what to Simon Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. And he goes on to say about how he did not, he was not discerning between what was basically truth and error, what was right and wrong. Here Simon Peter is, who's, who's, thought, who's, who's influencing P Peter's thoughts. By the way, when Peter said, we're not going to let this happen, why did he say that? He said it because he thought it. And what made him think it? Satan put that thought in his head. So... No wonder sometimes we see people acting out, and, and I'm talking about in our society, in our culture, in such bizarre ways. Why? Because they're just doing what comes natural. They just think, they're just acting out what they're thinking. And it's not just... Unbelievers, it's not just lost people that can be influenced like this. Even Christians can be. So we have to learn, based on, I'm going to go back to our text in uh, Philippians chapter 3. What we have to learn is what Paul was talking about when he says, I've counted this to be true. I'm, I'm, I'm leading my mind to think this way. Because we can get to thinking everything. We can get to thinking that God's no good. We can get to thinking that God couldn't use me. We get to thinking that there's, no, there's nothing for me to do spiritually, that I've made too big a mistake. All these things can go through our minds. And what's the filter? What's the filter that helps us realize that these things are not really factual and true? It's the Word of God. It's what God says. You know... That great passage in Romans 12 where, where Paul says, be not conformed to this world. Don't be like this world. Don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. By th learning to think the right way. This is um, in Philippians chapter 2. We're in Philippians now, but in Philippians chapter 2, in verse 5, look what he says. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Think like this. 
And we could, you know, make a mental note of it. We're not going to study through this. But it, it talks about how Jesus was co-equal with God and yet he became, made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. He said, you think like that. Think like that. You say, well, I can't. Yes, we can. But it starts with knowing that that's what God wants us to think. The same saying in the same book, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and following. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and honest, I'm just kind of abbreviating and just and pure. We're Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are lovely, good report, virtuous, praise, think on these things. Think about these things. We're to, we're to, we're to lead our minds. Um, still in Philippians, look in Philippians chapter 2. And I want to notice an interesting detail here in Philippians 2 in verse 3. Where it says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Don't do anything that would cause strife or create strife or, or give empty praise, vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Now that word esteem there is translated from the identically same Greek word as count. In Philippians chapter 3, it means let each lead your mind to recognize that others are better than themselves. Lead your mind, lead your mind to put other people before yourself. We can do that. This is what the Bible tells us to do. Are we leading our minds or are our minds leading us? Um, I think one of the things we're seeing on a, such a national scale is is really mind control it's brainwashing and people are getting it in schools or getting it in uh, the educational system the greatest proponent of it is the media just propaganda it's everywhere it's everywhere if you're listening it's everywhere I mean we're being played and we're being programmed and what we need to learn to do is don't let these people think for us we're going to think for ourselves because we have a Bible that tells us what's right and wrong. It's not just because we champion our conservative values. It's because we believe the Word of God is pure and true and we can believe what it says. You know, and you hear these things and, it's, and I'm concerned about what's going on in the world, but I'm concerned about what's going on among, among believers as well. It's like people who say, I'll give you a very common thing you've, I've heard for decades we need new translations of the bible so the words are easier to understand have you ever heard that lots of people say that you know what people say you know that makes sense that makes sense it's hard to understand what thine means what thou means that's tough right But you know what the Bible says of itself? The Bible says of itself, we're not to add anything to it or take anything away from it. That God judges that. What I'm saying is, you can't just let other people do your thinking for you. What does the Bible say? And, and you know, people have this idea, God doesn't care about those things. God, all God cares about is loving us and he doesn't care about what Bible we use. He doesn't care about what music we listen to. He doesn't care about the friends we have. God doesn't care about all those things. And you know what? People say, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense. But the only problem with it is it, it doesn't line up with the scripture. I mean, God cares about every detail of our life. Every detail of our life. And, and people who... Who are, say they're Christians, maybe they are Christians. I don't know, but they have this mentality that, you know, you know I, think, I think everything ought to make us feel good. I mean, the Bible we read ought to make us feel good. The music we sing ought to make us feel good. Give me a chapter and verse for that. It's not in there. Worship is not about making us feel good. Worship is about honoring God and glorifying God. So the point is, if a person does not want to think then, or doesn't learn to think, they're going to be in trouble because they're going to be left to their own imaginations. 
or the opinions of others or what's trending. And that's not good for us. So we have the power to lead our minds, not based on, not based on emotion. Emotion, feeling, sentiment, pre- personal preference doesn't even register on the scale. That's not even, that's not even, you know, it doesn't even matter. What matters is what does God say? What does the Bible say? What is, what is clearly taught in the Bible? I want to understand the truth of God's word. And whatever God says, that's what I want to do. You know, one of the reasons that, uh, I, one of the things I thought about in preparing this lesson was um, this time of the year, most of us generally take some form of a personal inventory. You know, how are we doing spiritually? And this is, I mean, what a crazy year to try to analyze is this year. But we ought to think about it. We ought to think about, what does God want from me? Is, 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 there more, is there more God wants from me in my personal devotion, reading my Bible, my prayer life, serving the Lord, evangelizing, witnessing? What does God want? And we ought to lead our minds based on what God says, not based on what we've done, not based on how we feel, not based on our track record, which is sort of what we've done, but based on, not even based on our natural inclinations. What does God want me to do? What does God's word say about this? And what I believe Paul is teaching us here, when he came to this a, a, a very dramatic a shift in his values, when he said, everything I ever thought was important, I now consider it worthless. And there's nothing else that I, there's nothing else that could exist that I would not consider to be dung compared to the the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now that's a great position to come to. Wouldn't you agree? And not only a great position, a healthy position, a beneficial position, for ourselves and others, a beneficial position. But how do you get there? How do you get there? You don't get there by being selfish. You don't get there by just trying to be popular. You don't get there by be thinking more about yourself. You get there by thinking about things in the Bible and the value system that we find in the Word of God. And um, the older I get, the more I believe that the mind is a great thing. And sometimes, this is going to sound kind of negative, I don't, sometimes the people whose minds are the sharpest are not using them the way they should. Because I'm telling you, young people, look at young people as they memorize scripture, four or five years old, it's incredible, isn't it? how quickly they pick things up. Teenagers have such an ability to hear and understand if they're thinkers, if we do our thinking for ourselves. When I say for ourselves, I don't mean ourselves apart from the Word of God. I mean ourselves with an open Bible. And I just want to urge all of us, but I especially want to urge young people, Desire to know the truth. Not just because the preacher says it or mom and dad says it. That's a good start, but because the Bible says it. Because the Word of God says it. And, and you, a, a parent may think this way, and a teenager might really think this way. Could I ever get to the place as a teenager that I actually loved reading and studying the Bible? Absolutely. Right? The Bible's not. Show me where the Bible is of no person's book. It's not. It's for all people. It's food for your soul. It's a letter from God to you. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't embarrass you tonight, but I would ask you, young person, teenagers, how many of you today have spent some time in your, in your Bible, reading your Bible, meditating upon God's Word? learning about God and His ways for you. 
And if you're not, you're not, use, you're not using your mind, you're not leading your mind to think the right things. You're just thinking whatever comes your way. And that's not a good place to be. That's not a, that's not a healthy place to be. Because the reality is we can justify just about anything in our life. Right? We can. People are here tonight because they... Their people are not here tonight because they didn't have anything else they could be doing, because they're just bored at home. They're here, they, they, they let, they're, they've come to the place by looking at the Word of God and the facts as they are in the Word of God and said, this is the best use of my time to be in the house of God, praying with the church family, worshiping God, studying the Bible together. And you know what? Those are biblically minded positions to come to. Amen? I'm not just saying to pat you on the back. It's a good position to come to. And if your mom and dad are here and you're here, you can say, well, I really, to be honest with you, I'm here because they're here. Well, that's good. But what are you going to do when you're old enough that they're, they're not telling you? Get up and get your shoes on. You can't go to church barefooted. When, you know, what if they're not going to be there to tell you that? Are you at the place, young person, you say, by the grace of God, as long as I live, this is what I'm going to be doing. Every Wednesday night, I'm physically able to be there. You know what? That comes from thinking, the right, leading your mind, leading your mind. Don't let your mind lead you. You lead your mind to think the right stuff. And that's God's plan. Amen? Amen. I got a nod out of that. Let's bow our heads together. What a great gift God has given us, this ability to think, to study, to process information. We don't have to stay with the things we've always thought. We can think, we can change the way we think, we can renew our mind, we can think on things that God wants us to think. We don't, we should not be, we don't need to overthink things, but we shouldn't be lazy thinkers either. Why don't you take a moment tonight and just say, Lord, I want to, I want to try to put this to work in my life, to leading my mind on really what to think, how I should feel, how I should think about whatever it is, about parenting, about Budgeting, about money, about ministry, about relationships. I'm going to, I want to, if God's help, with God's help, I'm going to lead my mind to think the way it should and not rely upon my natural inclinations and not, certainly not rely upon Satan's, uh, accusations and false information our father we thank you tonight lord for your word and we thank you for the challenge that's ours to live for you in a wicked world to think biblically in a world that's lost its way father we need to process this we need to Put it to practice in our life. God, would you help us, all of us, help me to rely upon your truth, the words of God, the principles of your word, to know what to think and how to think, to let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus.